Hi guys, in this lesson we can tidy up our application with some light styling and better organise our init function as it's starting to get a little bloated. Once this is done we can then move on to look at making the photo titles editable using the click binding, which binds a method of our view model to the click event of the element it's attached to. So first let's do a little refactoring. Currently our app does a few things related to creating and managing the promise object. And it also does a couple of things where it sets the options for our application. So we can shift these two sets of related functionality out into separate methods that manage these tasks for us. So we want to create two new methods called manage promise and manage options. So first we need to add them their names to our top level var declaration up here. So we want manage promise and manage options. And then we can add these methods down here. So the manage promise method needs to contain both of the lines of code related to the promise object. And then the manage options method can contain these two lines of code. And we need to invoke these functions first of all. Okay, let's just go back to the page and check that everything's working as we expect. And it certainly seems to be, which is great. So let's think about the styling for the application now. We're not gonna go through the style sheet line by line, and we're not gonna go crazy with styling. We just want a light skin to smarten things up a little. So I've already created a style sheet and added it to the CSS directory. It's quite basic and quite small and just contains some light styling for the application. So we just need to link to this style sheet. So now let's go back to the page and take a look at how it looks with the styling applied. So I'm actually recording at a much lower screen resolution than I than I use my computer at. And the reason why I'm doing that is to make the video that you're watching now of a much higher quality than it would be otherwise. Uh, so some of the styling is actually intended for a bigger screen resolution. So that's why we've got some of these items are spaced out nicely and some of them aren't. Um, I'm just going to ignore that for the purposes of this video. When you run it on your own computer, unless you've got like a tiny screen or you're using a mobile or something ridiculous, um, it should display correctly. So I'll leave the, the style sheet as it is. So at the moment, our titles aren't actually editable. You can't click on them or, or do anything with them. And we're going to make it so that when you do click on them, they become editable. So to do that, we can use the click binding. So first of all, we should add two new methods to our view model. So the first one is called stop editing. And inside this, we just want to find the element that has the editing class and remove the content editable attribute and class name from it. So now the second method is called make editable. And because this will be an event handler, it will be invoked by knockout when the event that we bind it to is triggered and it will automatically be passed several things, including the view model and the event object. 
just like the previous event handler that we added for the select element. And it should be a function, obviously. Okay. So the first thing we want to do inside the make editable function is just make sure that any other elements aren't already being edited. So we can just invoke our stop editing method that we just added. And then we can make the element that was actually clicked editable. So we can get the element that was clicked using the event object passed into the handler. And that will be in the target property of the event object. And then we can just set the content editable attribute to true and add a class name of editing to it. So all we need to do now is add the binding for this event handler in the HTML. So first we can bind to the stop editing method of the outer container for our application. So the reason we add this to the outer container for our application is so that if one of the titles is being edited and somebody clicks outside of one of the photos, then it will automatically stop editing for us. So next we need to add the click binding to the H1 and P elements inside the header and the spans inside the fig captions. Okay, so we bind the elements to the make editable method, but we also need to stop the click event from bubbling up to the outer container because otherwise it will just make the clicked element uneditable again. So knockout provides an easy way for us to do this and we just supply false to the click bubble binding. And we just need to make a slight modification when we add this handler to the span elements. Because these elements are inside the for each binding, the binding context changes. So instead of the view model being the current binding, it will be the current item that the for each is actually processing. So the method we want to invoke is a part of the view model, not a part of the individual photo objects. So we can get back up to the top level view model using the dollar root object in the binding. So this is a built-in property of knockout and it just allows us to traverse back up from an individual photo to the view model. So at this point, we should be able to run the page and then click the header text or any of the figure captions and they will become editable. So let's just try that out. Yeah, okay, that, that seems to, that seems to work. So if we click somewhere else, it should stop being editable. And yeah, we can edit the title or we can edit any of these. Sweet. Okay, so it looks like there's a slight problem with the styling. And the reason for this is just because we need to add some class names to the editable elements. So that should fix the styling. Let's just check. Yeah, okay. So it just highlights to the user the fact that they can click on these things to edit them. I mentioned in the course introduction that Knockout JS features a two-way binding system to keep the UI elements in sync with the data and how when an observable is updated, the UI is updated automatically. And when the UI is updated, the view model is updated accordingly. Well, this is true for elements like input elements, which raise the appropriate events when their value changes. But unfortunately, elements like divs or paragraphs that have the content editable attribute don't raise these events when their value changes. So Knockout can't update the appropriate view model properties when they change. This is unfortunate, but not catastrophic, as we can easily add a custom binding ourselves so that the view model is updated when these text values change. 
We'll look at this in the next lesson. Thanks for watching.